Okay, this is a follow-up video to Evelyn's cochlear implant activation video. So I thought we'd um, answer a couple of questions that we got on the uh, on the video. So here we go. So uh, Evelyn, how long have you had the uh, cochlear implant now? A year and a half, well, maybe three quarters. And how old are you? Thirteen. You so you were about twelve years old when you got it. No, I was like 11. Okay. In half. Like 11 and a half when I got it. And I'm 13 now. I just turned 13. And how did you lose your hearing in the first place? Um, I got bacterial meningitis in my right ear. And then I almost died. And uh, when I woke up, uh, I had like barely any hearing. I, ha I basically had like 1% hearing in my left ear and 1% hearing in my right ear. But some of it got back and I have like 5% hearing in my right ear right now, and I got a cochlear implant on my left ear. Okay. And, uh, I mean, how bad was it really? I mean, we were using whiteboards to communicate and... Yeah, when I, before I got my implant, they were just talking to me with a whiteboard. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty hard to hear. It's pretty frustrating. Were you starting to learn sign language? Kind of, barely. Well, I, we used it in the hospital a little, but after I got out of the hospital, we were just using whiteboard. And uh, do you think you need to learn sign language now? No, no. <laughs> so. Maybe for when my implant's off or something, but I, I can never take it off except when I'm sleeping or swimming or taking a shower. Okay. And so you think you got about 5% left in your, in your right ear? Yeah, but the implant's so good, I want to get another one in my right ear. Okay. So, um, how would you say, how well can you hear people talking? That's basically the only thing I have a problem with. Like, um, I hear noises and everything the same, but voices, words are really the only thing I have a hard time with, a little, like a little bit. I just say what a little more than people normally would. Like, um... Like certain vowels and stuff, I just like, they don't come out right. Like, it's kind of weird. It's just implant training, it takes over the years, it can get better. Um, like, okay, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, it's okay. Yeah. I can't remember what I was going to say. Okay, what was the question again? <laughs> it was how, how well are you hearing people talking, but... Oh, yeah, it's just that I, I miss words sometimes, but I don't, it's not that I don't hear their voices, it's like I'm, like I still hear sounds, it's just that a, a lot of times they don't, I don't make them out right, I can't make out the words, like I watch TV with subtitles still, but I still hear the voices. So, what do you think that it sounds like, compared to how you remember your hearing a year and a half ago? It's really close, it's just that I have a hard time with voices mm -hmm. Stuff. But you think it sounds normal? It's like as best as you can to hear right now in technology. Hmm. I mean, it's really close. It's Would just, you say it's it like sounds natural? Through, it's like hearing through a microphone, but it's not a, It's not really a weird and echoey or anything. It's like really normal. How did it sound when you first got activated, when it first got turned well, on? When I first got activated, I wasn't used to it yet, and basically I just heard background noise at first. I didn't, I wasn't really hearing voices better or anything yet. It sounded kind of weird. Just kind of sounded staticky, and I heard background noise more. And how long would you say that took to go away and start sounding normal? Like, two months. <laughs> hmm, okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, how do, how does it, how's the phone working out? Can you hear the phone? I can hear it some. I can, I'm not very good at having long conversations. It's hard. It takes a lot of practice. It's just I haven't practiced as much. It's not like I talk on the phone every day or anything. I barely talk on the phone. It's there. You can totally talk on the phone if you practice. It's like the same as just talking to people every day. It's just that um, I don't practice that much. There's a program by Cochlear called Telephone with Confidence that you use, and you call them for free, and it, um, a voice, like, 
reads a passage and you read the passage on the computer, you read along with them. And that has helped a lot. So you're starting to get a little better with the phone? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I don't know, you wanted me to ask you about swimming. How's that? How's that working out? Um, you can't, I, you shouldn't swim with the implant. You can't, it's not, it's water resistant, but it's not waterproof. Like, I do water gun fights and I run through a sprinkler with it. Like, you can get it wet, but you can't just dunk it underwater. You can't just soak it. I mean, there's a battery. There's like a little crack, and then there's a battery, and the water will get into the battery and break it. See, according to what I've been told and from the cochlear website, it is supposed to be waterproof. And we actually have gone kind of swimming in lakes, and she wore it, but she just didn't stick her head in the water. So no big deal. And it worked out great. And it, it's really helpful when you, if you just want to take a dip in a lake just you know and uh, some people it worked well to, to be able to talk back and forth yeah so when you get an implant it kills the hearing and that, and that ear completely so if you're not really like hard of hearing you shouldn't get it I mean you really need to be hard of hearing like barely have any hearing it's really yeah because when you take it off then you can't hear yeah so it's like if your batteries died suddenly you wouldn't be able to hear it but um, some people that have two implants, they swim with them. Like they put them in a plastic bag and the magnet is really strong and it like magnetizes through the baggie and then they put a swimming cap over it to hold it on and they swim with them. I just don't do that because I have a little bit of hearing in my right ear and um, I read lips a little, but I, I don't swim much. So So what's, let's talk about the surgery. Uh, how would you say that went? Um, did it hurt? Was it scary or I didn't really what was it think like? It was, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal, but I'm kind of older. Like, I, they put me to sleep with the thing. They put over my nose and my mouth, and I fell asleep. And then when I woke up, I was just really tired, and they fed me some jello. And And um, um, I was really, like, my head was hurting a lot. The first night, I had a big bandage over my head, but it was just the first night. It only lasted a night. And then the next day, I was totally feeling better. Like, I went, I got up and I went to the zoo all day and flew on a jet home. Yeah, it didn't, that's right. Yeah, it wasn't, it didn't last very long for me. You have to take lots of antibiotics and stuff, but... Hmm. Would you say that, uh, that you want, you do have 5% hearing in your right ear right now, so do you want to get another implant? Yeah, I still want to get it because the first one turned out so well and I'd be able to hear better still. Because I still watch TV with subtitles, and I say what a lot, kind of. So other parents with babies and, and their children that, that are having a hard time hearing, that are going, that either go deaf or get sick and lose some hearing, do you recommend it to, to other kids? I, rem I recommend it to people that are, like, hard of hearing, but if you just, are, if you just, like, kind of hard of hearing, then you shouldn't get it. I mean, you really need to be hard of hearing because it kills your hearing. So, unless, if you're, unless, what, um, so if you're completely deaf, you'd recommend it. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it. It's, if anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, post the questions, and I'll get right on answering them. So, all right. See you later.